Well, we're back in Scotland from the Faroe Islands and already my diet's gone to shit. I just can't resist these fresh cream jammy donuts. I, I'm disgusted with myself, but I have to do it. But we've only got two more days and then thank God we fly back to Canada and get my diet back on track. And then my, my diet's gone to part two. I've been eating haggis, black pudding, fish and chips, oh. pies. Oh. You know, an, an actual fact, I've been getting a lot of great comments on my channel mm. about um, how I've changed people's lives. Yeah. And I'm actually thinking of starting a channel where I not only do photography, but also life coaching. Oh, you're going to be a life coach? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Well, that works out brilliantly for me because I need some life, life coach advice. I need to lose weight and get back in shape. Maybe you could help me out. Yeah, I, th I think you do. For me to lose weight then, what's your first bit of life coaching advice? Well, Paul Skinny, just ask him what he eats. That's it, that's your life coach advice? Yeah, that'd be $20, please. You shove your $20 up your ass! So today, while we're in Scotland for this last two days of the trip, I've decided to reveal to Adam one of my secret places. This is a, a forest of spectacularly old beech trees, not far from where my parents live. And uh, I've shot this place many, many times before. I've got really nice shots. Well, I think they're really nice shots. I'll show you some of those. Um, but I know that Adam loves this kind of, this kind of photography and these kinds of scenes. So yeah, it's time to uh, share the joy in the hopes that when we get back to Vancouver Island, he'll uh, return the favor and show me some of his secret spots. I'll give you a couple of uh, life co free life coaching. Oh, free life coaching sessions. Sessions, yeah. Oh, that saved me some money. Oh, look at this. Little waterfall there. Kind of cute. It's completely different to the forests that we have on Vancouver Island in terms of how it looks, the types of trees that we've got, and the smell. Uh, I really love the smell of this forest. It's, it's a totally different smell to what we're used to back home on Vancouver Island, which, and I love that smell too, but it's always different everywhere you go. It's a very different flavor to the senses. Oh, what's that? What's that smell? Manure. <laughs> The first stop was what I call the octopus tree, for obvious reasons, but it's quite difficult to shoot, so I figured I'd come back to this one later. Now, whenever hiking through tick infested beech forests, it is absolutely vital that you have appropriate footwear. Oh, how those words would come back to haunt me later on that very day and the next. Now, I don't mean to get all spiritual and poetic on you, but whenever I visit this forest, I definitely get that spiritual vibe. At the very least, it feels to me like a museum or an art gallery, and every single tree is a work of art with more than a few masterpieces. It was so good to be back in the motherland. There's nothing quite like tramping through the forest with your buddy for no good reason than to just get outside. So let me talk you through a shot that I captured about five or six years ago. I'll show you the shot. Here's the shot. And what I'm loving about this whole composition and what I was going for, and you can see right here on this video is just how this tree is, is creating a nice frame to frame that tree in the background. Now, of course, today it's very dull, flat light. And the shot that I got before had some lovely morning light on it, which made the trees glow a little bit. But even in conditions like this, it's still very beautiful. But I think the ideal conditions, and you know what I'm gonna say, because I, I always think this, is fog. If I could get fog here one morning, oh man, the shots that I could get. And if I lived here in Scotland, I would probably come here at least once a week. 
in the hopes of capturing that particular mood. Even though it had only been a couple of years since my last visit, some things had changed. I've talked about this in uh, other videos where I've explained how you just can't take anything for granted, how uh, the landscape is always changing and nature changes it for you, whether you like it or not. So it's about two years since I last uh, shot a picture of this tree and here's the shot that I got a couple of years ago with some lovely morning light. But right now, you can probably see a part of the tree has fallen, it's, it's collapsed and it's kind of ruined any chance of getting that composition now. So nature has wiped out that shot. However, as, as Adam just pointed out, the part that's fallen over will probably continue to grow and sprout into the ground and afford different compositions in the future, which it could be 5, 10, even 20 years before it turns into something beautiful again. But uh, yeah, it just goes to show you can't take anything for granted and assume that it's always going to be there because it ain't. With the fragility of the forest in mind, these fleeting conditions spurred us on to find compositions that we may only be lucky enough to capture just this once. And that made this visit all the more special. This will sound really pretentious and flowery, but it's true in that I look at each one of these trees as like a living work of art. It's taken, I don't know how many decades for these beautiful shapes and curves to form. And you could just stand and stare at them for hours. They're that beautiful. And it's really great in this forest because there's big expanses of space in between these giants. So they're a little bit easier to uh, compose a shot with because they're slightly simpler in terms of the background. Now, if we had fog, that would make it even easier to isolate. And I, I've said this many times before with forest photography, it's always trying to find that isolation of one particular character that's a standout character in this forest of amazing characters. But um, I think we'll, you know, we'll walk around a little bit longer and try and find that one scene that pops and that really becomes obvious. And sometimes it takes you hours. You might wander around a forest for hours looking for that perfect combination of shapes. Maybe you might never even find it, but if you don't go looking for it, you'll definitely never find it. What's good about this forest is we're on a slope. So trees like that one that you can see in the distance there, um, it would be a little bit easier to isolate because you're not down looking up into a white sky. We're above it looking down with a hill behind it. So everything behind it is canopy or a green hill. So that would make that a little bit easier to compose, but I don't have a 400 millimeter lens to zoom in and capture that at shallow depth of field and isolate it. But I do know a guy who does. Just minding me on my own business, trying to cross this dark void of darkness yeah i'll get there it's, it's like a like an ocean of blackness well do, ooh, what's the ooh, whoa 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 i don't like this you want a hand here yeah. just get on my finger oh what's that what you get off me don't touch me just get on my finger uh, i don't oh i don't i don't Look, i'm trying to help you just get on my finger oh fuck off will you oh, leave me God. alone come on i'm trying to help you get i just want my camera bag back Oh, God, no, I can do it myself. Oh, I don't need it. I'll just leave me alone to do my own thing. Right, so I'm done. I'm going to go down to that first tree. You coming? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to steal your composition. The one with the 200 millimeter lens. Well, you never took it. You can't steal my... I'd never steal your composition. Uh, actually, you have. Yeah, that's... That's true, I did do that. Yeah, that's uh, calm her back to bite you. $20, please. 
So I decided to come back down here to what I call the octopus tree for quite obvious reasons because it does look like a many limbed sea creature reaching out towards the lens. So I'm going to try and find a composition that I haven't shot before. Now I've shot this many many times before but almost every time I come I get that very bright spotty sunlight. So it's def very difficult to expose and, and not get parts blown out and it, it looks odd and complicated when you've got like circles of white hot light dotted all around the tree. So this is the first time I've come here and got completely overcast soft light. So this does afford me a few different compositions that I could never get before. So let's see what I can frame up. So the problem that I've got now that I've framed up a whole bunch of wide shots, especially if I get closer to the tree, is that as I get closer to the tree it reveals all of those white gaps in the canopy which I can't stand. Now when it's foggy that just fades away and it's it's got this lovely isolation and separation from that kind of problem. But with this situation it, it's just white blocks of light and I don't like that, it complicates the composition. Now if I move further back that does fix that to some degree but I've got all of these tree limbs in the way so I can't actually physically see through all of that to the tree so it's going to be very challenging. I may have to um, put on a longer lens, get further up the hill and then shoot longer to try and reduce that white space up in the canopy and get a simpler composition which is a shame though really because I love these wide reaching limbs that really come out towards the lens and, and also act as cool leading lines to bring your eye back into the center of that trunk. So it's a bit disappointing but I'll see what I can do. Alright, let me talk you through this shot. So, I've got the 55mm on and that has obviously forced me to have a much tighter composition than the previous ones which was the 16-35 to and I was struggling to get that white sky out of the canopy. Well now that I've got the 55 on, it's a much simpler composition. So if you look in the top of the frame there, you can't see any of that white sky. There's just tiny little slivers, but it's no longer the big problem that it was. And of course, I've filled the frame with these limbs. And what I love about this composition is how these two giant limbs are reaching out towards the lens. And that's what I, I want to get across that feeling of that intense growth and that spread of this octopus tree. So you've got this one reaching out here. You can see how it buries itself in the ground as well. But in terms of the composition, it's really very simple. I'm filling the frame with what is most interesting and that is this tree. And I've tried it from all different angles and I've found that this arrangement of limbs, the way that you've got them just spreading out in all directions that tells to me that tells the story of this tree and, and its growth and how it's taken over this patch of the forest even though you can see from the other side of the tree that it's fallen over in parts and regrown and just sprawled across this complete scene so what I did is I focused on the canopy in the distance there and I've, I've taken the shot with a multitude of apertures uh, started at, at uh, f11 went all the way up to f16 and with this lens the the sony uh fe 55 it's kind of notorious for having lots of barkies so i did focus stack the foreground here i think at f14 and with that selection of different apertures uh, I, I've pretty much got everything I needed. I didn't really need to bracket because it's not super bright in that canopy so I'm just shooting it at the exposure that the camera's telling me to shoot at and it seems to have worked out quite nice. I went for that shallow depth of field look that I just love so much in forest photography. I shot this at f1.8 to get that blurry background and I also really enjoy the blur on the limbs as they lose focus the closer they get to the lens. I think it gives the image a more cinematic look which to me feels right for the scene and then after that I got inspired to shoot this shallow depth of field 
panorama at f1.8 by stitching together three horizontal frames to give me the ultra wide composition that I wanted, but with the shallow depth of field that I needed for subject separation. Right, mate, I, uh, I've got some pretty juicilicious shots, almost tremendous, but I'm done. Can we please just get the hell out of here? Well, well, what's, the, what's the problem? Well, I'm getting eaten alive by creatures. I've already pulled five ticks off. It's horrible. Five f f ticks from where? From my feet. Oh, God. Do you want a piece of advice? What is it, life coach advice? Yeah, it? are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Ah, you f Wear shoes and socks. $25, please. <laughs> Sour about me stomping on your foot. You needed that. I needed that, did I? You're a bully. That's what you are. I'm not a bully. You're a bully. You today you fat shamed me. Right, that's how the day began. Then you gave me crappy life coach advice, charged me twenty dollars a piece, stole my composition, and then stomped on my foot. You're a bully. I thought that was excellent advice. That's Wait, what my mum no, gave me. That is bollocks. Wait till we get to my place. I'm going to tell my mum what you did. You're in trouble. Oh. Oh, you're out of order. I'm out of order? Ah. Well, we'll see what Roy thinks about it then. Oh, don't tell Roy. Roy will be getting his slipper out. No, oh, don't bring it up with Roy. Thumbs down. Thumbs so, down. did you have a good day today, Gavin? Well, I'm glad you asked, Mother, because no, I didn't. Why? Because Bugalug's here bullied me. <sighs> Adam? Yeah, he bullied me. He fat shamed me. Never. He stamped on me foot. He kept charging me $25 a pop for crappy life coach advice. Oh. And worse still, he stole my composition. Well, I'm really disappointed in you, Adam. I didn't think you could be like that. Not to Gavin. Mm. I think we're going to have to get Roy in oh, on this. I think so. Roy! Oh. <laughs> Right, you buggers, you and your digital photography. Oh, God. These are proper cameras. These are what you take good pictures with. I'll show you how photography is done. <laughs> Come back here, you buggers. Up into my dark room and I'll show you how it's done. Life coach. Oh, a life coach? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that works out because yeah, I, I need to lose weight. Yeah, I think you do. I could, I could do it. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, for me to lose weight, then, what's your first piece of life coaching advice? Well. <laughs> like that. Oh, that, that, that was good. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep a straight face on that. <laughs> okay, hang on. So, what's your first bit of life coaching advice for me to lose weight then? Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat it all in one, you've got, you got a few more takes to go. So, what's your first bit of life <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Alright, I've got it. <laughs> 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 oh my god, are you I'm gonna get buy another one of these? Oh that wouldn't be a bad thing. So for me to lose weight then, what's your first bit of <laughs> <laughs> Oh god oh, oh, I've gotta get through this. Well I've been pulling I've had five ticks, I've pulled five ticks off me. From where? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to save my testicles. <laughs> bit of a uh, bit of advice for you. Oh, life coach advice, is it? Yeah. Shoes and socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I've got a piece of advice for you. Oh, yeah, is it life coach advice? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You ready? Yeah. Shoes and socks.